Today we're talking about hard to find bottles and how much we would actually pay for them. I might get myself in trouble on this one. Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey, I'm Aaron. I'm Josh and I'm about to be a dead man. So let's go <laughs> ahead and get into this video. We are talking about hard to find bottles and how much we would actually pay for them. We will reference the suggested retail price within proximity because that can, we know the suggested retail price, but kind of what they go for usually. And that can vary state by state, but we're, right. we're kind of taking an, an average. Right, and we're gonna run into some things here where we're dealing with hard to find bottles and people have strong opinions on them, yes. I think is where I'm driving at. Yeah. And look, you didn't make the whiskey, we didn't make the whiskey, okay? Different people value different things. We are dealing with this in the context of our own personal proclivities, our own personal sensibilities, and our personal budget. Our personal spending habits and things of right. that nature, yeah. And that varies, because there's people out there and you are absolutely justified and fine in saying, I'm not paying more than $30 for a bottle of bourbon, or $50 for a bottle of bourbon, or $100 for a bottle of bourbon. Yeah. That's totally fine. I also would say, please go back and watch the video that just came out recently within the last week or two or three of us talking about the value in spending up for some bottles for some reasons. Mm, and that is a very telling video. I honestly wouldn't even watch further in this one until you watch that video. I'll put a link in the video description below mm. where you can find that video. Then go to your history, bounce back over here and watch this after that. We're only gonna speak to our personal experiences based on probably at this point, over 500 blind tastings on the channel over really? the last few years. Yeah. It's been that many. Yeah, I mean, we do two, three videos a week and but they're we've, not, oh. we've done content for th all... three years now. Wow. So, wow. yeah, or we've tasted 500 things. We haven't done 500 blind. We probably have, I've probably done 500 blind tastings in the last year, three years, but we probably haven't done, we've tasted five, oh, good grief. We've tasted 500 it. things. It. They can get, they, they can yes. piece it together. Anyways, we've done a lot of blind tastings. <laughs> Words are is hard. the point, yeah. is the point. So we're gonna get right into it. We okay. have a list, we'll, we'll pop up photos on the bottles. Should we say that this video was spawned from another video mm. mm -hmm. that you saw? We should do that. We should give the Bourbon Junkies credit yep. because they had a video that was exactly this premise. They had their own bottles. We did poll our Patreon community to see what bottles they wanted to see us cover, mm -hmm. which is going to be very interesting. Some of the things on our list are different from the things on the Bourbon Junkies list, but shout out to Dan and Sean for having the idea for this video. Yeah. Very informative, very insightful. We will link their video in the video description below as well, yep. so you can bounce over there. They cover some different bottles, and I think for the most part, I kind of track with where they're at. But let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, let's do so it. So we'll reference the list. We'll pop up a photo of the bottle here, there, wherever. You'll see it. Here, there, everywhere. Yes. So let's start with Michter's Special Releases. Okay. And this is the 10-year bourbon, 10-year rye, toasted rye, mm -hmm. barrel-strength rye, some of the single barrels. We've never had any of the 20 or 25 years or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We're specifically talking about what we've tried, which is mainly the 10 years of both expressions okay. and the toasted rye and the barrel-strength rye. MSRP on those, or suggested retail price on those rather, on the 10 years is about 170-ish for both. And then for the toasted rye, I think it's about 100. And for the barrel strength rye, I think it's around that $100 range as mm -hmm. well. What would you pay for those? So I think I need to preface this whole video <laughs> By saying, I'm not willing to pay a lot of money, a lot of money. You also don't shop for the whiskey. Let's oh, yeah. be honest. Let's be but I'm not willing to pay a lot of money yeah. for something I've never had before. Mm -hmm. So let's, I'll probably reiterate that several times throughout this video, but like that's the premise I'm coming from. Can you tell people what is your threshold if you've never had something before? How much are you willing to spend to try something if you think you'll like it? If somebody tells you you should like it. $50 or less. Okay. That's my, I've never had this before. I would pay 50. I would pay up to 65. Okay. Only because, do we have time for one quick story? Yeah, quickly. Okay. There's a musician that I like that has, apparently now has his own whiskey. I've Is it never, Chris Stapleton, Traveler? No, it's um, Nathaniel Ratliff and the Night Sweats. Oh, really? And he has a collaboration with a brand that I've never heard of before. Me either. And I was scrolling through the website and I was like, oh, okay. I've, and in my head, I was like, 
because I like his music, I would be willing to pay $65. That I don't know why that number came in my head. I'd be willing to pay $65 to try this bottle of whiskey from a musician that I love, from a brand of whiskey that I've never heard of before. And then I kept scrolling and the price and it was $100 and I was out. Okay. She almost fell into the celebrity whiskey trap. But I really wanted to try it because I like his music. All right, let's get back to the Michters. Okay, so but before we do, let me go ahead and just say Traveler. That's a big thing right now. Chris Stapleton's whiskey. I'm a big Chris Stapleton fan. Love Chris Stapleton. Love his music. However, Traveler is a blended whiskey. It's not on our list. We're 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 very ad, off script we're already. Right here, uh, forty bucks for ninety proof blended whiskey. How much would I pay for that? Zero dollars. I'm not buying a bottle. You will not see a bottle on the channel. Why? I'm sorry. It's not the thing I'm gonna like. I'd pay forty dollars for a bottle I would, of whiskey. I would rather pay thirty dollars for a bottle of Elijah Craig. I'd rather pay twenty five or thirty dollars for a bottle of Buffalo Trace. All that stuff's gonna be better than Traveler. It's a gimmick. But you don't know. I do know. I know it is what it is. What, what's what's here's the, blend? the thing. Things it's a blend of Canadian whiskey and Barton. 1792, which is owned by Sazerac, who but also you, owns Buffalo Trace. You like Sazerac. I but mean, you like would, 1792. But why would I pay $40 for a bottle that's blended with cheap Canadian whiskey when I could pay $25 for a bottle of 1792 small batch? The math okay. doesn't make sense. That's fair. That's fair. It's, so, but but you're also not a huge Chris Stapleton fan. Like, you're not anti-Chris Stapleton, but no, you're not a like Chris a Stapleton huge fan. fan. I'm a pretty big Chris Stapleton fan. Are you? Yeah. Oh. But I don't care to buy his whiskey. Okay. I just don't care and I'm, I'm not going to things are what they are the more we've done this the more blind tastings we've done the more i realize things are what okay. they are whatever hype is around that is due to marketing and his name and all that stuff i'm just not buying a bottle i know we're going to try it once on the channel i know it's going to be middling at best and i don't need a bottle and if you like it and it's easy drinking and easy sipping that's exactly what it's designed for and more power to you i'm not throwing shade okay. i just prefer more flavor. I have one more question. It's going to keep us off track. Oh my goodness. We'll get back to the mixers in a second, y'all. This is going to be an hour long video. What about the Nick Offerman stuff that we bought? That stuff's good. But did you, did you buy it because it was Nick Offerman? I bought it because I heard it was good outside of his name. Like it's like, this okay. is a celebrity whiskey that's actually but, really good. But you heard it was good. And then the fact that his name was on it made you go like, oh, it's probably really good. It's also well-aged, cast drink, I'm just, peated Isla whiskey. I'm just wanting to like no, play on. devil's advocate no, no, no. here because You're, I feel like the celebrity name does play a part and that's okay. It can. It can. But. And that can be okay because it did with the Nick Offerman stuff. We knew it was good. We'd yeah. heard it was good. You're like citing Michael Jordan. Nick Offerman is like the Michael Jordan of whiskey collaborations in the celebrity world. Okay. You're, you're talking about. I'm not an saying he's not, but it's also similar. I'm no, just... it's not. It's you're you're comparing apples to okay. like snow peas or something. Okay, whatever. Like, you refuse to listen. No, it's I'm not. Fine. Cash strength, peated Isla Scotch with age on it, is a thing that's good that we like. We do not, I do not like light, easy sipping, low proof, that's fair. inexpensive blended whiskey. Okay. I just don't. And that's what Traveler is. It just has a marked up price tag because of Chris Stapleton's okay. name being behind it. All right. Let's get back on track. <laughs> Michter's. Michter's what special are you releases. I Dick. will pay <laughs> the suggested retail price for the toasted barrel rye because I have had it before and I love it. Yeah. It's a hundred bucks. As do I. Which is kind of a lot for, in my mind, but I've had it and I know I love it. And I know to me it is worth a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. The others, I think I've probably had, but I don't remember. So if I don't remember, I probably not, I'm not going to pay it. You've had them all. They're not standing out. They're not standing out, but the toasted barrel rye does stand out to me. Yeah. For me, I would pay a premium for the toasted barrel rye. I love that stuff. I personally would probably as much as I like it, be willing to go up to what I consider to be special bottle pricing, which would be about $200. Wow. On the barrel strength rye, I would be willing to buy that at suggested retail for the 10 years at 170 bucks for low 90s proof. It's just not my thing. I prefer more proof and flavor. So yeah. I would tend to pass on those. However, specifically speaking, the 2023 bourbon, after having tried that, if I got the opportunity to buy that bottle at retail at 170, I would buy it, but a lot of those are getting marked up because of hype, getting marked up to $400, and I would not pay for that, but that so, for them. So overall though, you would be willing to buy any Mictor special, special release at MSRP? Yeah, 
close or to suggested retail price. I would waffle on the rye and the bourbon. I had an opportunity to buy the 2023 rye at retail from a local store and I passed on it because it's not the type of product that gotcha. I like. I'm okay. more of a bourbon guy, but I love Michter's barrel strength and toasted barrel rye. It's just, a t I think the toasted barrel rye is the best kind of limited thing they make. I've never tried the 20 year I plus stuff. I agree with so. that. All right, let's get into the next thing. Okay. Four Roses limited editions. We have been fortunate enough, thanks to many of you guys for samples, to try a lot of these from the last handful of years. Mm -hmm. I think everyone from the last handful of years and some of the older releases as well. Where are you at on these? So Do they, these stand out they to you? They typically run what, what, you say 170? I, th I think they were 150. I think they're up to 170, okay. 175 now. They're, they're so going up. From my recollection, I have always like enjoyed the toasted or the Four Roses limited editions, but I've also they've never blown me away. Mm -hmm. So I would not pay suggested retail for them. I think I would just kind of pass overall. Yeah, they're good, but it's a lot of money for me for something that's to me that's just good. Right. It was a good experience, but I would pay suggested retail. I'd pay up to two hundred dollars for one for sure. I know on secondary or marked up store prices, they can go from 350 to 450. I know there's been craftsmanship put into the blending process, and I know it's a high quality product that I can kind of rely on being reasonably good. And I am tempted sometimes to pay those elevated prices, mm. but I haven't yet because it doesn't hit me quite that good. And for me, I, I honestly speaking, because of the limited nature of it, it's pushing beyond the scope of kind of special bottle pricing into special release pricing, because that's what it is. Mm. And I would be willing to probably, honestly, if I had $250 and a bottle was in front of me for that amount of money, I think I would pay it. I don't mm. think I could go over that. Yeah. So that's just where I'm at. I feel like I personally have never had one blow me away enough to spend that much money on no. it. Let's keep rolling. Okay. Four Gate, Kelvin collaborations, or just... And again, our Patreon audience asked for these. I think this is fascinating because this one really challenged me. Four gate Kelvin collaborations. Okay. We've had two, three, four, yeah. five. We generally do like them, but they are so two hundred dollars at suggested retail. I need retail. you to, to help me remember. Is Port Perry Perry a Kelvin collab? It's not a Kelvin collab, but it is a four gate release. So I think that's where I forgot. Like when you showed me this list earlier, mm -hmm. it was a, specifically the Kelvin collaborations. Yeah. And I don't have a recollection of any of them. Okay. And but you remember so Port Perry, Perry. if you're new to this channel, I would like to preface the fact that Josh is the whiskey nerd and I'm more of the whiskey social sipper enthusiast type. And as far as cataloging what I like and what I don't like, unless it stands out a lot, I don't remember. So Josh is kind of in charge of remembering what I like. But you remember Port Perry Perry. I remember Port Perry Perry. So I would pay, that's a $200 bottle. But you tried it before we bought a bottle. I would, because I tried it and I knew I loved it, I was like, yes, you can, because he does our whiskey shopping, you can buy us a $200 bottle of whiskey, which blows my mind that I even said that. But I had to try it first and I had to know I liked it before I would commit to spending that much yeah. cash. Like that's a lot. Right. So is it fair to say Forgate in general, because of the high price tag, you are a try before you buy person? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. So the Kelvin collabs, I don't know. I don't remember having any of them, so I'm Fine. gonna say no. We've already covered it. You try before you buy. Yep, try before I buy. For me, the Kelvin collaborations are the most consistent thing they do, but I also do really like their port or you know Ruby port finish rise. Mm -hmm. um, for me, if it's a port finish rye or a Kelvin collaboration, I would I love it if they were at 150, but even at 200, I would buy it if I had that money in the budget. Okay. But it's it's tough. I'm really on the fence, and I oftentimes don't have 200 dollars in the whiskey budget. Because you so. spend it like as soon as the month. Yeah. turns to the first yeah which is a great lead-in to our next thing which mm. is other non-distilling producers because forgate does not distill their own products they source okay and then they do what they do and then they rebottle it and you know there there is some work and some magic that yeah. goes in behind the scenes but other okay. non-distilling producers and we're talking about everything from somebody just buying mgp sourced or green river sourced or whatever and throwing it in a bottle mm. versus up to like contract distillation versus people who are doing things like sourcing things, double barreling them, mm -hmm. finishing them, all that okay. stuff. Where are you at on those sorts of things? On that, I am still a try before I buy. Yeah. I, again, that's a lot of money. Usually because the, they're usually higher price, those sort of 
things. They can be, yeah, because you have to pay for the sourcing of the product, right. and then you have to make your margin. They have to roll those costs into the bottle. Right. I get that. I understand that. That's fair. But I, before I fork down some cash, I got to try it to make sure I like it. So same yep. thing. Try before I buy. For me, it's a little bit more reputation-based. So when you're dealing with somebody like Barrel King and a membership program, I can see the value in that. I can see the value in something like the Luca Mariana type of things or uh, rare characters or things like that. I can see the value in those sorts of things. And as long as I have the money in the budget and it's interesting enough for me and I believe in the reputation of the company sourcing the stuff, mm. then I would be willing to pay whatever the suggested retail is. But honestly, a lot of times I have to know what's going on. I have to know the reputation. Yeah. I have to know the source. If it's just somebody buying MGP from Indiana and they're throwing it in a bottle with their label and some fake story that they created for marketing purposes, I'm out. But Fair. we have percentage wise more national barrel company in this house than any other right. product at all. And their stuff we absolutely love. You know, they take stuff, they do their own thing with it. They're aging it here in Nashville, in Tennessee, which is where we live. And granted, maybe there's some local bias, but in blind tastings, it tends to hold up for yes. us as well. It'd be some of our favorite whiskey out there, period. Huge National Barrel Company fans here. So for something like National Barrel, if I know who picked the barrel or if it's something that I know I can trust as far as what's coming from them, mm -hmm. I'm a buy. But then I'm a pass on all the source MGP that's on the shelf with a marketing spin on it. I just, Fair. it's not my thing. Yeah. Now we might ruffle some feathers. Let's get into some of the, what I call the standard Buffalo Trace allocation. Okay. Standard Buffalo Trace allocation stuff, which is not mm. the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, but okay. all their regular stuff that they release, which is Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, okay. Colonel E.H. Taylor, Mashville Number Two things like Elmer T. Lee, Rock Hill Farms, Hancock's President's Reserve, the Weller line, special Green Label, Special Reserve, Red Label, Weller 107 Antique. Okay. All, all those That's stuff. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Do any of those things I just named strike you as I special? Mean, and that I, you would pay over suggested no, retail price. No, I wouldn't pay over suggested retail price for any of them, honestly. I yeah. out of the ones you named, Eagle Rare is the one that I enjoy the most. Yeah. But I also wouldn't hunt it or pay over suggested retail for it. At suggested retail, I'm pretty much a buy just to have a bottle around. Mm -hmm. But most of those things I don't particularly care for all that much. I do like EH Taylor okay. I do like Rock Hill Farms but we've never owned a bottle of it. We just had a few samples and it's generally good. Uh, I do like the Weller Foolproof and Weller Antique 107, but not enough, not willing enough to pay more than, mm. you know, Weller Antique 107 and our market is 65 bucks. I'm fine paying that for it. I really don't want to pay $100 for a bottle of that. Yeah. I definitely don't want to pay $200 or more for a bottle of Foolproof. If I could get it for 70 to 100, I'm fine with that. Elmer T. Lee is barely a buy at $45. To me, Eagle Rare, I'm happy at 40 or 50 bucks. Buffalo Trace, 30 bucks. What did I miss? Uh, the I Weller line. A lot. No, 30, you already you talked about. 30 or 35 for Special Reserve. Uh, for CYPB, I'm honestly out at over 70 or 100 bucks. The only way I would spend more than that is if I was buying it specifically to trade it. Same for the single barrel. If somebody really wanted it and they had a bottle of value that they got their hands on that we could work out a trade or something like that that's the only way i would buy either of those two products they're just not special enough for me to want to pay extra money for yeah but yeah i mean that's people's jams a lot of people really love that oh we didn't cover blanton's but we did do a classics revisited on blanton's where we talked about it mm -hmm. and for us that's kind of just keeping a bottle around to have to share with guests in our market it's 80 dollars retail which yeah. That hurts. I think 50 or 60 is the most I would want to pay for it, but I'll begrudgingly pay $80 to have a bottle for guests or to give as a gift to somebody that really does like it, like a yeah. family member that's, you know, that's their jam. Yeah. Now, a bottle in that collection that I do like is the Stag, formerly known as Junior. Okay. And I guess you could wrap E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof in here as well. The Barrel Proof Buffalo Trace let's, stuff. No, let's do Stag, formerly known as Junior. Because that's what, you, what we talked about. What would about. you pay? Knowing that retail is somewhere between $50 to $60 suggested retail, but in our market, if you get lucky, you can find it for $100. So for Stag Junior, I would pay retail if I've had that particular batch before because there are batches of Stag Junior that I dislike. 
Aaron has a sordid history with uh, Stag Junior. Yes, batches. we have a love hate relationship. There are some Stag Junior batches that I really enjoy, and there are some that I absolutely despise. So I would pay suggested retail price for the ones that I liked, but not for the ones I dislike. Yeah. So I'd have to know which one I'm buying. Yeah. For me, without tasting the batch beforehand, I do typically like Stag Juniors. It's varying shades of how much I like them, but most of them I like pretty well. Yes, they are 60 to 100 bucks. No, I never see them for that anymore. Would I be willing to pay 150 for one bottle Ooh. of a batch to try? Maybe. To try? Or if you've had it before, you know you liked it. No, just any batch. The new batch comes out. If I could get my hands on it for 150 and I had $150 sitting in the budget. But now it's just called Stag, right? Stag Bourbon Batch 23 A, B, or C, or okay. whatever we are into 2024. Um, for those, I know I like the profile enough because I've had enough of them that I would be willing to go up to 150-ish on a batch that I hadn't tried. I know I like it. I know I like it more than a lot of four gate stuff and I am willing mm. to spend 200 on four gate. So I okay. realistically probably should be willing to pay that much money for something I like more. Yeah. But without having tasted the batch, 150 is kind of my cap. Now, if it's a batch of stag, junior or formerly known as junior that i know i love i've tried i would pay 200 for that personally speaking you don't have to agree with that it's just some of my favorite stuff which is why i'm willing to pay a premium for yeah. it because i like to have it around eh taylor barrel proof i'm in the exact same boat across the board 200 is kind of a hard cap for me personally speaking now while we're on the topic of this the natural progression is the buffalo trace antique collection now which is it's, it's a host of five bottles, Sazerac 18 year. Okay. And they're all about $150 retail. Okay. Sazerac 18 year, which if we find, if we find any of these in a lottery or raffle situation where we can purchase it at retail, I'm just going to let you know, we're going to buy it. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for letting me know. I would never pay over retail for Sazerac 18 year. Okay. Which means we're never going to pay over retail for that. Fair. Uh, Thomas H Handy, the other rye, the barrel proof six okay. year rye. That's one I could see personally spending more money for, but yeah. there is a lot of six year barrel proof rye and older out there that I think goes toe to toe, including Jack Daniels single barrel ryes mm -hmm. that are a hundred dollars. Wow. My mouth stopped working a hundred dollars or less. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do prefer that to Thomas H handy. If it's a good single barrel mm -hmm. old Forrester rye single barrel barrel strength. So would you pay a premium over $150 to have a pretty bottle no. of Thomas H handy? No. I don't even know if I've even had, have I ever tried it? You have, and you've picked Old Forester and Jack Daniels Rise over it in blind tastings. There you go. Depending on the year. So, yeah. Yeah. I would not then. <laughs> if I could get my hands on one, I'd probably pay two or, two or two fifty for it. It's kind of like my special bottle cap, and that's where I would be willing to go, okay. you know, on something. Eagle Rare 17, again, we don't really pay much attention to that. You're getting two in the weeds for me. I don't even think I would pay that much for But any a lot of people watching do care about these individual bottles. Okay. And want, you're not the whiskey shopper. I'm not. We said off the top. I've, that's evident. Let's reiterate it right now. <laughs> you don't care about Eagle Rare 17. No. What's the difference? I mean, other than age, what's the difference between regular Eagle Rare? Regular is 90 proof. The 17 is now 101 proof. Okay. But it's, the 2023 is good. I would pay a premium for that, but... The previous releases, okay. I'm only going to go suggested retail and yeah, unless I was buying it to trade it for something. Okay. Um, now, the interesting thing about the antique collection is George T. Stagg and William Leroux Weller, which we have both enjoyed a lot okay. over the years. I think the value in these two products is if you like big proof, mm -hmm. big flavor, but craftsmanship that balances things out to where they're not bowling you over mm -hmm. with heat and everything. In that way, they are kind of unique products in the market, and I'm willing to pay a little bit more for those types of things because I know there's a consistency of quality compared to single barrels, yeah. and I can find information on them because they're big enough releases. So this is where I'm probably going to get in trouble with her and you guys in the comments because these are the two products I am willing to pay more money than you might think for. So but which for ones? You, which two? William LaRue Weller and George T. Stagg. George T. Stagg. Okay. For you... Both being $150, what are you willing to pay? $150 if you got the opportunity to buy them? I guess. Yeah. I like them. Yeah, then, you did. Then yes. Yeah. Again, she's not the whiskey shopper. <laughs> I would be willing, knowing what they're what they go for, 
and knowing what I would be willing to pay in a bar. And I, again, I urge you to watch the video in the description below about how much, like why we might want to pay more money for a bottle mm. because we're not hunting. I don't have the time. Aaron's hadn't set foot in a liquor store in two years, probably because I do all the shopping. You know, we're just, that's not our speed. Yeah. We would rather invest in the community and that's where we spend our time instead of hunting bottles and that's just all, that's all we have time for. Yeah. <laughs> that's we pour all our time that's, into the community. That's where our bandwidth goes. Yes, exactly. But that's why I would be willing to pay more for a convenience fee to find it and yeah. then share that bottle under a special occasion. So I get that. And because of the quality control and knowing that every William LaRue I've ever had, I've enjoyed to varying degrees, and every George T. Stag I've ever had, I've enjoyed to varying degrees, okay. I would be willing for a special occasion bottle. We're outside of that two to two fifty cap now. Oh, we are into we've gone up. We we've gone up a lot. We are in true special, like, truly special. Tell me, do tell, spill the tea. How much? I would probably be willing to pay, maybe up to seven hundred and fifty, a thousand dollars if I had the money in my budget. Shut the front door. All right, thousand dollars. Listen to me, okay? You will never have that because you always spend it. I know. But I'd be willing to pay it because here's why: I don't need. Uh, 10 bottles of a hundred dollar pretty good whiskey i would rather have one bottle of exceptionally great whiskey to you exceptionally t exceptional to you to me. great whiskey because i've tried I get it. that so fewer things but more things that bring you more joy but fewer of them right and i would never drink it by myself unless yeah, yeah. something we hit some crazy life milestone or something yeah okay. it would be to have here in house and share with friends your logic is sound yes i might question your price range but your logic is sound we all we all pay what we want to pay for things yeah. we we don't like car notes so we have cars that we paid cash for yeah. and we don't spend a lot of money but there's other people who pay a thousand dollars a month on a brand new truck note, yeah you yeah, know it's fair i'm not going to pay a thousand dollars a month every month for a brand new truck it's but what, i would pay a thousand dollars once to have a bottle of william larue the value something holds to you equals how much you're willing to spend on that thing so right. i get it and that varies person to person right so yeah and, I, and i'm a guy who likes having a one or two really nice bottles of whiskey that I can share with special guests, loved ones, and create a memorable experience. That to me is way more valuable than a new truck, you know? Yeah. And if you prefer the new truck, that's great. But I would prefer to have that bottle of whiskey and that special experience. Or if you're someone a, who prefers to have a lot of um, lesser expensive options so you have more variety to yeah. choose from, that's fine too. And like I think it's all what you prefer and what your personality kind of yeah. is inclined to go towards. And we were there at one point mm -hmm. where we would rather have more. Now we have over 300 bottles. We have plenty. The yeah. last thing I need is another 30 to hundred dollar bottle that I don't drink very often. I would rather have that special bottle because we have so many of those already, yeah, you know? Yeah. So we're speaking a little bit to the personal journey through the whiskey experience. Yeah. You know, we're at a stage right now where we pretty much outside of this channel buy store picks or picks we do ourselves because that's what we like, single barrels that are unique mm -hmm. and that we love, which you can find out more about our barrel picks over on Patreon if you wanna get involved. Yeah. And we got an awesome community over there that's helping people find some of the bottles that we're talking about here in this video that we've already covered and that we will be covering. But definitely check out Patreon if you're interested in that. Best dang whiskey community on planet Earth. 100%. And yeah, we just can't say enough good things. And also, if you want our barrel picks, get in on the free tier, even if you don't wanna do the $3 tier that gets you involved in our Discord and our online community. The free tier, if barrel picks make it through the paid tiers, will get you access to those. So anyways, that's the logic behind. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing to pay more for a special experience. I mean, you know. I follow your logic. Yeah. Check, the video, check the video again down there. Let's keep it moving. Yep. We only have a few more here. Okay. Heaven Hills special releases. And this includes what is that? the Heritage Collection, like the 17 year from last year, the 18 year from this year which we have tried and liked, but you did like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof over it in a blind tasting. Okay. You can find that in the back catalog. We're talking about William Heaven Hill distillery releases, which are $300 a piece. We're talking about the Parker's Heritage Collection, which I don't even know what they go for because we've never had the opportunity to buy one. Okay. But these are Heaven Hill distillery special releases that are gonna range from like two to 300 bucks. You're probably not gonna buy them unless you've tried them, right? Correct. Yeah. And I cannot recollect my thoughts on any, any of them, them yeah. at the moment. So I'm going to say no. Well, we did like the 
Parker's Heritage Double Barrel that came out a couple years ago. Okay. But we did like the 13th County Double Oaked more. Okay. And this is a situation for me where I'm a little bit more of a try before you buy type of person, mm. which honestly speaking, if I got the opportunity to buy one, what I would do is try to find a bar or restaurant I could try it in, or I would try to do some sample trading to see what I had my hands on, mm. taste it before I opened it. And then if I lo loved it, great. I've got the bottle there to open. If I didn't like it as much for what I paid for it, I would just find somebody to trade with that wanted that bottle and appreciated it. And I could find something that was maybe a little bit yeah. more preferential for me. Generally speaking, I do love Heaven Hill, but I find that Elijah Craig Barrel Proof suits most of my needs. And I don't feel a huge need to pay up much more than that. Yeah. Even though Heaven Hill 17 did really impress me. And I am very curious about Heaven Hill 18 year, but the 20 year corn whiskey, I didn't love all that much. So I'm not willing to pay a premium on all of them. Only if I know I've tried them and love them, which right, if you're ever in Barstown, Kentucky, right down the road from Heaven Hill is Willet. And Willet has a core range of offerings that do sit on shelves in a lot of markets, but we're talking about the special stuff, the purple okay. top bourbons, the green top single barrel rise. Okay. Do any of those stand out in your memory of, from things we've tried? So I feel like early on in the life of the channel, we had some like Willet purple top come up and maybe a head to head or something. And I think I did like it. Mm -hmm. How much does it run? What's the price? Depending on the age, it's all sourced. It, it, they're all over the place from like 250 to 300 up to like $2,000. I and mean, that seems like a lot for something. I'm probably going to say no. Like, yeah. I think I remember liking it. And correct me if I'm wrong. I remember liking it, but it didn't like wow. blow me away. I wasn't yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing I've ever had. Yeah. Okay. A lot of the Willet stuff has a pretty predominant cinnamon note for me. I don't know where they get a lot of their stuff, but some of their stuff, at least, that I've tried has a predominant cinnamon note. That's not my favorite note mm. in whiskey, especially when it's so forward. I do like that. I do like cinnamon. So for me, the purple tops, I'm almost a pass unless I find one for like 200 bucks. And I that's very doubtful. I don't even know that they sell them for that cheap. Um, I, what I would do instead is if we're ever in Kentucky and we're at the bar at Willet, have an egg salad sandwich, which I love, or the chicken thighs, or those brown butter cashews. Ooh, the brown butter cashews. Yeah, oh my if gosh. we're there having some food and drinks, I would maybe order some pours off the bar. Based, I, would, I would do that. And I would talk to the bartender and they, I could tell them what I liked and what I didn't like, and they could try to hook me up with some things that they thought I would like. Yeah. That way it's qualified um, for the rise every six, seven, eight year rye or more that I've tried, I have really loved, but again, the prices are really high. For me, again, it's it's not the type of thing we ever have access to. And if we did, I don't know enough about what they do to feel good about spending a lot of money. Yeah. So will it stuff for me is pretty much just reserved for at the pours distillery. at a bar, <laughs> specifically at the distillery, when I can talk to the bartender and tell them what I like. Yeah. So I think I'm on that same boat too. Like Having that experience at the yeah. Willet Distillery, if you get to go, would be cool because yeah. that little, the vibe of the restaurant's really nice. Yeah, we're not paying a premium for them though. Yeah. So let's keep it moving on to Wild Turkey, okay. one of our favorite distilleries mm -hmm. in some ways. Yeah. But they have their Master's Keep line that has come out or has gone up in price. It's been out for a while. Mm -hmm. And then they've come out with the Russell's line of like the 13 year, the single Rick House CNA yeah. and CN, or CNC and CNFs. So these special releases that are happening under the Wild Turkey and Russell's labels, all of those command a premium of somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 300 or more dollars. Mm -hmm. Are there any of those that you've tried that stand out mm -hmm. to you? No, I have found for me with Wild Turkey products, when they go like off book, as I call it, they try to be fancy. Do too much. Do too much. I don't tend to like it. I just yeah. like their regular regular stuff you like rare breed you like rare breed rye you like 101 I like 101 yeah just you like the regular stuff. the regular stuff yeah. I, so Aaron is a man of the people <laughs> okay yes um yeah. so I would not pay up for any of their special stuff personally yeah. but I know a lot of people like like you like yeah. Russell's reserve a lot yeah or Russell's 13 no I no. like wild turkey generations That's generations and I don't Wait, decades is the one I don't like. You, there's a lot you don't like. I can't see Every, again when they go fancy. It's too. Tur it's too much. All old turkey in blind tastings turn you off. You don't like it. I don't like it's old not, turkey. It's not your thing. Yeah. You like the regular stuff. I like the regular stuff. I like a lot of the special releases and the bottles are beautiful, but I don't find them to be necessarily worth the price of admission. Personally speaking, CNC single rick house and CNF single rick house are great, but there are single barrels that go toe to toe with those or even beat them. 
Now, you don't know if your single barrel is going to beat them or not if you find a single barrel somewhere, but it's worth trying. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not willing to pay $300 on Russell's Reserve Single Rick House CNF, personally speaking. I like it a lot, but I don't, having tasted it, I, I think I would have to taste these releases before I know whether I want to pay try such a premium buy. price. Yeah. So yeah, try, yeah. that's where we, that's where I need to say, try before you buy. The one that has impressed me that I would pay premium for is Wild Turkey Generations. It's a $500 bottle. If I had $500 in the budget, I would buy that because I like it that much. Okay. So that's where we're at on that. A couple more guys, Jack Daniels special releases. This includes the age stated 10 year and 12 years. The Heritage releases every year, like the Barrel Proof Rye, mm -hmm. Koi Hill, you know, uh, the Twice Barreled Rye. Most of these at retail should be $100 or under. Okay. Now they get marked up because they're hard to find, but at $100 or under, how do you feel about the Jack Daniels special releases? I have had enough different Jack Daniels special releases that I have liked to feel confident saying yes at retail price for hey. any of them without having tried it yet because I've had enough. There's a backlog of like success stories there for me. They've earned your trust. They've earned my trust. Yeah, I'm gonna say I would unilaterally just flat out buy any of them yeah. at retail or under. I trust Jack yeah. Daniels to put out good stuff now. And, and I don't think I would go much over retail personally, maybe like 150 for a Koi Hill, mm -hmm. but that's it for me. Yeah. I will say the two that, the two that have been most impressive to me are, or the three rather, Jack Daniels 12 year batch one. Okay. I would be willing to pay a slight premium for that. I, I would be willing to go up to 150 or even 200 for a bottle of that, especially now as we get further away from that first release, I would be willing to pay up to $300 or Maybe wow. I would be willing to pay up three hundred dollars for the special release rye from twenty twenty, and okay. Koi Hill whiskey bourbon is some of the best whiskey I've ever tasted in my life, and I it's hot. But they are if you don't like hot, you wouldn't like it. But though. here's the thing: most of them are single barrels, so you don't know what you're buying into, mm -hmm. which is what makes me hesitant to purchase a product like that. Going back to the William Larue Weller and the George T. Stag. I can find a place, a bar, a restaurant mm -hmm. where I can go taste any specific year of those two products and if it's I can be find the it. Same, yeah. And then I can know if I'm going to buy that product. I have faith in that. With Koi Hill, you're buying into it blind because you can try it. I know I've tried probably a dozen single barrels now and a couple of the small batches, but they're all different from each and other. And some of you have liked and some of you have not liked so much. Some are lava hot and others are some of the best whiskey I've ever tasted in my life, mm -hmm. which makes me hesitant to pay a lot more than a few hundred dollars for those, but I know they can be so special that I would be willing to take the risk. So if I had 300 bucks, I would be willing to go that okay. on a Koi Hill as well, but I would struggle to go much more than that without knowing the barrel that I was buying. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could talk myself into pushing to like that $500 mark, like the Wild Turkey Generations range, but I couldn't go over that. And this is kind of calling back again to the William LaRue and the George T. Yeah. Those are the ones I'd be willing to pay more for because they're more predictable. I feel my you money know is, a certain year. If you tried a certain yeah. year and you like it, you know you could go buy that certain year and you'll still like yeah. it. Now, I don't like those as much as yeah. the Koi Hills and, and the special release rye and things like that, mm -hmm. but the consistency mm -hmm. matters to me if I'm spending bigger money. So that's just where we're at. Yep. King of Kentucky. This is a biggie because this is like my great white whale. This is and your now we have one. Holy Grail bottle. We have one over here. This was a gift. This is a very generous very gift. Very generous gift. And the best gifts are things that you would never get for yourself. And that's where King of Kentucky falls for me. You yeah. traditionally like King of Kentucky, yeah, all right? But I've not had it very much. Yeah. No, I mean, nor have I. So it's good. I like it, but it's like, isn't the retail price the suggested price? Granted, I know that bottle well enough to know you could hardly ever get it at suggested retail, but 300 if, bucks, 300 bucks. Yeah. I haven't had it enough to feel comfortable spending that much of my money on it, but I could see how people would, but yeah. I'm going to say, no, I would not spend, I would, 300. I would wouldn't. not spend 300 on it. Yeah. Personally speaking. Now our money is a different story because we've got our budget and then we each have like a little fun money budget that we can spend on whatever we want. So I'm talking about, I wouldn't spend my fun money on King of Kentucky. Yeah. Now, if we had a discussion and you really wanted to buy a bottle, we would make it happen with our budget. But my fun money is not going to, to that. Yeah. For me, they are single barrels, even though I do like it more than George T. Stagg and William LaRue Weller. 
They are single barrels, which gives me pause to spend bigger money on them. Mm. With that said, I think again, it falls into that wild turkey generations, Coy Hill range where generations is batched. And I don't think it's worth more than that for me based on how it tastes, but I am happy at 500. Coy Hill and uh, King of Kentucky, I'm willing to take a risk okay. at 500 because I know I'm going to like it. It's just a matter of am I going to love it, love it, love it, love it. But I still would like to have that bottle to have that special experience because I'm not going to sit around here on a Tuesday and drink, and drink King that of by Kentucky. yourself. You're drinking that when we have people over to share right. that experience with people. And I want to create that special experience just like you might want to go out and take your significant other on a nice dinner or something like that and you're willing to pay a, a big premium for a two hour span of time yeah. at a restaurant that you're gonna enjoy, I'm willing to pay a premium like that meal, but to have that experience a dozen times over with different people yeah. that I care about, that I'm visiting, you know, hanging out here at home, or if I take it to somebody's house and, and we're enjoying it together, to me, that's an experience worth paying for. And there's not a lot of bottles that provide that. And we've covered a few of these in the video today. Yeah. King of Kentucky, William LaRue, George T. Stagg, Coy Hill, or Jack Daniel special releases. Yep. There's not a lot of stuff that does what those do, even if you can find something that in a blind tasting might get close to those or even beat those for your palate. That special experience those bottles offer to me is yeah. worth paying for because I value experiences with loved ones, friends, family. And that's just where we're at over here. So yeah. there's some other things we could talk about, like vintage whiskey. We're probably not going to gamble on that sort of stuff. No, it's just it's, there's too much unknown. Exactly. It's the sort of thing that if into the unknown. You hate that song. I know I do, we would but go, it just came to my brain. If we were in Louisville, we would recommend going to the bar Neat and just trying dusty pours there. That is how I, now that I've done it one time, yes. one singular time, that's how I, the only way I want to try old whiskey is yeah. like at a bar, specifically Neat, because the vibe is really cool. And then they've got all this like vintage whiskey you could yeah. try for like by the poor. So yeah. you could try a bunch of different stuff. And some of that stuff is worth paying a premium for just because you're getting such a unique experience and they vetted the bottles. So if they open a bottle and start tasting it and it's trash, they're not going to continue to serve that to customers. Yeah. Whereas if you buy a vintage bottle, you're taking a gamble with trash. that money. <laughs> yeah, you're taking a gamble. So we would rather let Neat assume that. And if you ever go to Kentucky or you want to go on a bourbon trail trip, go there, carve out an evening or two to go to Neat, be willing to pay a little bit for a premium pour, but you can get vintage stuff there as little as like 10 or 15 bucks a pour as well. The pour so. that we had was we went with a group and my pour was the cheapest of the group. I think it was like 15 bucks yeah. and it was a 76. No, 76, 68, 68. Yeah. Yeah. Why did I say 76? Yellowstone. 68 Yellowstone. Yeah. Amazing. Beat, I still beat the think, wild turkey cheesy I still gold foil. think about that to this day. Yeah. Beat the wild turkey cheesy gold foils. Beat the late 80s, early 90s turkey that we tried. Yeah. That Yellowstone beat so everything. Good. And it was the cheapest pour on the menu because yeah. they were consolidating. They were trying to get, yeah. rid, like, get off the yeah. menu because they just had a little left. Yeah. Anyways, this was a fun video. I know it ran long. We had a lot of bottles we wanted to cover. Far longer than the Bourbon Junkies video, probably far less entertaining. But if you like this less entertaining style of content, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Give us a thumbs up, like it if you like it, and hit that bell if you want to join us for a live stream. Probably should have saved this for a live stream, been a little more conversational with y'all, but it, mean, it'll serve as its own standalone video. Yeah. We'll see see what you guys say. If you guys have any like comments of what you would pay for some of these yeah. bottles we've talked about. I think the more interesting thing, just to keep things positive, which we try to do over here, yes. is if there is something you're willing to pay more than yeah. suggested Let's retail for or a positive. premium, then let us know the thing or two that you would really be willing to pay up for. That yeah. could be really interesting. Yeah. What would you be willing to pay up for? Let's not be negative. Let's, let's keep and it why. all positive. And why? Let us know why. So Ooh, the why is important. Yeah. Well, I think we'll cap it there. Yeah. Yeah. That's we've, it for we've today. We've said enough. We've said it all. We can say no more. I bid you adieu. Be good to each other. And until next time. Cheers. cheers.